Welcome. It's good to see you. I mean it. I look forward to Sundays. Is that better? Okay. Are you ready to worship? Yes. Oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting an answer. Okay. <laughs> this is a question that the children in children's worship and wonder are asked every Sunday when they go downstairs. One of the leaders stays outside the door, and before the children go in, she asks them, are you ready to worship? And, you know, it wouldn't hurt us to do that, maybe. That's kind of a signal to them that it's time to quiet their minds and their hearts and their bodies and they're entering a sacred place and they're going to worship God there. I'd like to invite those who are not with us, who are Zooming today, if you would like to get juice and bread to participate in the communion and perhaps a Bible or a candle, Anything that helps you feel the presence of God would be appropriate. Also, regarding the masks, they are only required when you are singing the hymns. After that, it's optional. It's up to you. So, David, would you help us get ready to worship, please? Thank you. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created. Renew the face of the earth. Teach the hearts of your faithful that we may always rejoice in your consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Each week we're learning new ways of greeting one another without handshakes or hugs. This week, because it's Pentecost, we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of peace that Spirit brings to us through Jesus. Because the dove is a symbol of peace in the Bible and also a symbol of the Holy Spirit, let's cross our hands in front of us with palms facing and overlapping our thumbs like so. And we're going to say, peace be with you, and then extend the dove to someone else. And the response is, and also with you. So let's stand as we're able and exchange peace. <laughs> Shall we um, sing our opening hymn? Are you ready? A bit of singing. I do think so. message and you know when you were all these people around you they were little kids once you played tent under the table when there was a tablecloth so if the kids want to take advantage of this lovely tent you are welcome to do that and as we do that we're going to sing together um, this little am I in the way <laughs> this little light of mine and Annie's been working on a little improv she's going to she and the band are going to do an intro for us, and then we'll start singing. Meanwhile, the kids are welcome to come on up, and you can find a good place to sit and a good place to listen. Are you ready, band? Take it away.
Good morning. You know that song? That's awesome. It's a great song, isn't it? Well, today is a very special day because today we are remembering Pentecost, which is a strange word. Can you guys say Pentecost? Pentecost. Pentecost. Yeah. And it's, um, it's a special day because on that day, it was like 50 days ago that Easter happened. And it was 10 days ago, at least in terms of the church calendar, when Jesus raised and went back to heaven. And so today is Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes and does some special things in the world. So I'm going to show you something, and you guys don't even get to see it until later. But can you see what this is, guys? This is a reminder about Pentecost. What does this thing look here look like? Looks like a Pentecost. Can you, can you tell me what that is? What does this white thing look like? What's that? A dove, that's right. It's a dove. And can you see the direction it's heading? It's heading which way? Is it going up or is it going down? It's going down because it's a reminder that this Holy Spirit comes down from heaven to us. And can you see these yellow circles here? That's a reminder that this one's God the Father, God the Son. Well, this could be God the Holy Spirit. This can be God the Son, but it's reminding us that God is seen in three different ways. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Can you tell me what color these circles are? Gold. Yes, and, now, and that's kind of the color. Can you look at those candles on the table? It's kind of gold too, that's right. And it's a reminder of fire. And what color is this here? Red, and that's kind of a color of fire too, because fire is also red. So it's a reminder of Pentecost. You guys will see this in a little bit. But <laughs> this is a reminder. So remembering the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Let's have a prayer. Gracious, holy, and loving God, we ask you to give these children minds to know you, hearts to love you, and hands to serve you by your spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back.
Thank you, Ellie. That was just beautiful. As we come together today with joys and concerns, as we mentioned earlier, since we are live streaming, we are only mentioning the first name and the initial. And Kay will be coming around after uh, I present the ones that we have that we know about. For those of you who you have a concern or a joy or a prayer, at, raise your hand and Kay will come and uh, give it to you. I would like to start off this morning. I got notice yesterday from a very dear friend in Sacramento who has recently been diagnosed with COPD. And we found out yesterday that she has gone into hospice and her family and her friends are sort of in a state of shock because it's been just recently that we even realized that she had COPD. And her name is Carol C. Along with that, we need to remember Jan w G V. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jan is still having some memory issues and some issues with balance. And they are continuing to do testing and trying to find out what's going on with her. We also need to continue to remember Allison C, who is having some mental issues, and remembering her family, who are working very hard to manage her care. We need to remember our regional ministers, our co-pastors there. During this period of time in which they are uh, looking for an interim and the, process, the search process is going on. So we need to remember Doug and Kathy. We need to remember Karen W. Who is taking care of not only her mother, Jan, but her aunt, Mabel, and is still in the process of grieving for the passing her, of her husband and her father. We also need to remember those in Guam, where the typhoon Mar War came across last week. And we need to remember those that are living on the island there for strength and wisdom as they try to regather their lives. There are a number of people <clears throat> who are traveling right now, and one of them is Sydney H. and her son and her son B, who are Ben, who are in Germany. There are several families that are in grief right now. The family, family and friends of Nicole M, who is Sharon F's niece. She was 39 years old. 
She had been diagnosed with fibro fibro cystic fibrosis many years ago, but she passed away this last Thursday, leaving a 10-year-old daughter and a husband. We also need to remember those who we are celebrating tomorrow that were killed during the wars and for their service to our country. I'd also like to recognize those and thank them for their service, that they're home safe and that they serve their country that are members here in Murray Hills. There's also the family and friends of Wayne M., Amy D.'s uncle and family, moving closer to family. Family and friends of Larry C., Delina's uncle, who evidently passed. We have some joys today, too. We have some birthdays, which is really great. And they are Susan N. and Mim, Mim Stur S. Sorry about that. <laughs> Mim S. Who will be celebrating birthdays this week. And also the blessing and the joy of the fantastic job that the, quiet, that the bells and everyone did today. Now, Kay, would you, are there any other Prayers and concerns, Kay will be happy to come in. You already requested travel mercies. Uh, I'd like to extend that in a broader sense. There are many people traveling, as this is sort of the first holiday in summer, pre-summer. But I'd like to request a specific prayer for our daughter and her family who are traveling from San Antonio up to the Pacific Northwest. Five people, two dogs, and one vehicle. <laughs> so I think travel mercies would be requested for them. Thank you. Please continue to pray for Linda P. Uh, she's really struggling, so just pray for whatever it's going to take to get her well. Uh, next month is Pride Month, and I have been out and proud of my true self for many years, but officially as Xander for six years now. And I am blessed every day to have this loving family who has accepted and loved me. But not everybody has that. And especially with our nation struggling and trying to pass and has passed a lot of anti-LGBT laws, it's scary. And we all need love and support from everybody. Paul and I would like to ask for prayers for <clears throat> a next door neighbor, Fred and Robbie are in their low 80s, I believe. Um, Robbie broke her hip and is in a wheelchair, and Fred is suffering some degree of dementia. Um, about two months ago, their daughter Susie and her husband Jim moved in to help them. Um, within about two weeks of that time, Susie was diagnosed with liver cancer and passed away yesterday. So the whole family just needs love.
Uh, my friend Mona W. passed away last week. Uh, she was a colleague and a mentor as a musician to bazillions of children. Um, very fluent in Spanish, did a lot of work with farm families in uh, Washington County, the Forest Grove area. So where we are, Mona, jingly jangly to you, girl. Will you pray with me? Oh God, our creator, our sustainer, our friend, someone who walks with us closely each day. We ask that you be with each and every one, and we know you are, for those that have asked for prayers today. We know there are many things that were not mentioned this morning. There are people who are struggling with passing of family members and friends. They are those who are lo struggling from loneliness. There are those who are struggling with family decisions that are very difficult as to what to do with them, how to take care of them. There are those that are traveling on this busy, busy weekend. And there are those who are aging and they're having difficult times as well as their family. What do we do? Oh God, we know that you are with us. We know that you do comfort us and you do give us the strength. We want to thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. And most of all, oh God, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
place to sleep. You ought to, you ought to praise him. Bless his holy name. Our first reading is from Numbers. Listen for God's word. So Moses said to the Lord, why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I'm not able to carry all this people alone for they're too heavy for me. <clears throat> if this is the way you're going to treat me, put me to death at once if I have found favor in your sight. And do not let me see this my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, gather for me 70 of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out of the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Our second reading is from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. Here ends our reading. May God bless our hearing, understanding, and living of these words. As private clubs go, 
Club 33 is one of the most exclusive in the world, limited to only 487 members. Presidents of the United States, leaders of foreign nations, dignitaries, actors, and business leaders from around the world have all enjoyed the club. Located at Disneyland, above the Blue Bayou in New Orleans Square is one of the finest five-star restaurants. When it opened in 1967, it was originally intended for Disneyland's corporate sponsors and other VIPs, but individual memberships were offered as well. With such an exclusive clientele, the membership waiting list is long. In June 2007, there was a 14-year wait. If you're interested in membership, upfront costs are $30,000, with annual fees of $15,000. Unfortunately, in 2022, the membership list was closed, and they're not accepting any more applications. If, however, you happen to know someone who has a membership, you can accompany them, and they'll let you in the door. Club 33 and our readings from Numbers and John have something in common. Have you ever felt left out? Maybe an older sibling won't let us in their room or tag along with their friends. Perhaps a classmate has a birthday party, but we don't get an invitation. Maybe a bunch of our friends rent a beach house for graduation, but we don't find out about it until they're back. We discover a good friend is married only because of pictures on Facebook. We've been passed over for promotion at work three times and are now working for people who were hired after us. Have you ever felt left out? It's not just as younger siblings or grade and high school or work that we can discover ourselves excluded. It's not just part of growing pains. Sometimes whole groups of people are left out because of ethnicity, color, class, gender, sexual orientation, language, or religion. Restrictive covenants on housing deeds once mandated property not be rented or sold to colored people. Equal pay for equal work, a simple idea is still not the case for women's wages in comparison to men's. Equality under the law for LGBTQAI plus people, despite past gains, is having current setbacks. Being left out is not only an individual issue, but a societal one. Most everyone knows what it's like to be excluded. Being left out was not Moses' problem. He didn't feel excluded at all, but was overly included. He complained, I'm not able to carry all these people alone. They're too heavy for me. Lord, if this is how you're going to treat me, just kill me now. Moses was at the end of his rope, fed up with trying to feed all the people. 
as the exclusive leader, he was exhausted. He'd painted himself into a corner and couldn't picture a way out. The minutia of ministering to a mob of 600,000 was killing him. Every decision went through him. Nothing happened without his approval. Moses wasn't attacked by a great white shark, but being nibbled to death by guppies. <laughs> Moses was burned out, washed up, and ready to throw in the towel. Instead of asking God for help, he complained loudly. Take me now, Lord, because I can't take it no more. God didn't grant his death wish, but gave a new lease on life. To Moses' exclusive leadership, God proposed a novel solution. Include others and share the responsibility. Moses gathered 70 elders at the tent of meeting. The Lord came down in a cloud and shared the Spirit on Moses with them, and they prophesied. Moses' singular burden was distributed among 70 elders. Moses' model of serving God shifted from I to we, from exclusive to inclusive. God multiplied Moses' efforts by sharing the Spirit with others. As a single leader, he'd been overextended. As one among 70 others, he could now serve as God intended. One whose exclusivism led him to be overly included found a solution in including 70 others. Our story would be neat and tidy if it ended there. If it simply told us Moses moved from Club 1 to Club 70, it would be a straightforward account of sharing leadership. Yet there's more to the story. There's that distressing duo, Eldad, me dad. They weren't among the 70 around the tent. They weren't invited to share a portion of the spirit. They weren't even elders, just regular Joes in the camp. Eldad, me dad. The same spirit that rested on the 70 elders now rested on these regular Joes, and they prophesied just the same. A young man saw it and ran to tell Moses. Joshua overheard it, and he said, Moses, stop them! Joshua wanted to draw the circle tightly around Moses and the 70 elders. Here is where leadership is located. Outside is the rabble. For Joshua, the leadership circle had once only encompassed Moses, but now it expanded to include the 70 invited elders. To go beyond that, well, that just wouldn't be done decently and in good order. Eldad and Medad weren't respecting the established boundaries. On the guest list of the 70, or even elders. Yet Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and the Lord would put his spirit upon them all. Moses, whose understanding of leadership had expanded by 70, had room not only for Eldad and Medad, but all 
God's people. May God's Spirit be poured out on everyone. It didn't rest long on the elders, but leapt out to those who had been left out. Eldad and Medad. Our story starts tidy, but ends messy. The spirit didn't stay confined to the tent, but spilled over into the camp. Neat and tidy. That's what graves are supposed to be. Places of tranquility where the dead stay buried. That's what Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea thought as they washed the bloodied and bruised body of Jesus. They neatly wrapped him in linen cloths and spices to cover the scent of decomposition. They tidily placed him in a new tomb and sealed the entrance. If our story ended there, it would be a neat and tidy ending to the life of a Jewish martyr, one of many who were crucified. Yet there's more to the story. Jesus was dead, but the Spirit had other plans. The Spirit by which he was conceived, the Spirit by which he was baptized, the Spirit which shone forth at his transfiguration, that same Spirit raised him from the dead. It was messy, all right. Grave clothes left in a pile, the rock rolled away from the entrance, guards falling over one another left and right like dead men. Messy, terribly messy as the spirit spilled out, leapt out of the tomb, and brought the resurrected Jesus to Mary Magdalene, who tried to cling to him that morning. That same spirit guided him to an upper room that evening where ten of his disciples were huddled and hiding. He said, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and side, and they rejoiced. Then he commissioned them, saying, As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Almost parenthetically, we're told, but Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, wasn't with them when Jesus came. Thomas was left out, excluded. We don't know the reason he wasn't there. Maybe he was so depressed from Friday's crucifixion that he just couldn't drag himself out of bed. Perhaps he was so frightened that he fled the city. Or maybe he was being brave, being a lookout while the others hid. Perhaps it was his time to gather food for the others. We don't know. But for whatever reason, he was left out and excluded from that Easter evening's appearance. The story started out neat and tidy on Friday. But by Sunday, the Spirit had made things 
awfully messy. There are some interesting parallels between these two stories about the giving of the Spirit. We find in these two accounts several connections that tell us something important about the Spirit. First of all, we see there's a gathering. Moses gathers 70 elders at the tent. The disciples, at least 10 of them anyway, are gathered in the upper room. What this tells us is that the Holy Spirit is operative among groups of people, not just an individual all by their lonesome. The Spirit moves in and among throngs of folks, people who are gathered, not scattered. Secondly, we see there's a gifting. Moses' burden has been trying to minister all by himself to 600,000 people in the wilderness. God's solution is to take some of the Spirit on him and divide it among the 70 elders to gift them with leadership so they can multiply Moses' ministering. The Spirit gifts 70 others with leadership so Moses' mission can be continued. In John's Gospel, Jesus says this about the Spirit. It is to your advantage that I go away so that I can send the Advocate to you. He also says, you will do greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Jesus, who embodied the mission of God during his ministry, was only one leader, one spirit-filled person. There's no way he can minister all by himself to the countless numbers who will come to believe in him. The solution is to take some of the spirit that rests on him and divide it among the disciples. The spirit gifts disciples with leadership so Jesus' mission can be continued. We can do greater things than Jesus because his spirit has been multiplied and divided amongst disciples worldwide. We see the Spirit gifting others for leadership in both stories. Thirdly, there's a going. The 70 elders aren't just to stay at the tent and hold hands singing Kumbaya after receiving the gift of the Spirit, but they are to go among the people and serve as Moses would. Jesus says to his disciples, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. The disciples don't stay in the upper room, but go to all corners of the world and serve as Jesus would. Those who are gathered are gifted by the Spirit and compelled to go into all the world. That's the commission or commission that Jesus gives disciples. There's one final parallel that's striking between these two stories. I'm wondering if you might help me out with it. In the story from Numbers, Can you tell me who was there with Moses around the tent? To be clear, I'm asking about the names of the 70 around the tent who are elders and officers. We're not told, are we? 
When we come to that first Easter evening in John's Gospel, the ten who are gathered there are also unnamed. We are not told, are we? The names that are remembered and recorded in these two stories are those who were left out. Eldad, Medad, Thomas. Now this may first be, seem at first an insignificant detail, but within it, I find great hope. You might say it lights a fire in my spirit. For you see, I wasn't there when a smoking fire pot and flaming torch passed through Abraham's sacrifices. I wasn't there when Jacob saw a fiery ladder stretched to heaven. I wasn't there when Moses saw a burning bush. I wasn't there when a pillar of fire led the people through the wilderness. I wasn't there when fire descended on Mount Sinai. I wasn't there when Saul was anointed by the Spirit and became a new person. I wasn't there when Elijah called down fire from heaven on that soggy sacrifice on Mount Carmel. I wasn't there when Elijah saw rocks split, felt the earth quake, heard fire roar, and then utter silence. I wasn't there when chariots of fire took Elijah home to heaven. I wasn't there when an angel took a burning coal and touched it to Isaiah's lips. I wasn't there when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in Nebuchadnezzar's furnace. I wasn't there when Ezekiel saw a fiery figure like a son of man. I wasn't there when John the Baptist said that someone coming after him would baptize with fire and the Holy Spirit. I wasn't there when Jesus sent out 70 with his power and authority. I wasn't there when he shone brighter than the sun at his transfiguration. I wasn't there when tongues of fire fell and a mighty rushing wind happened on that first Pentecost. I wasn't there when the hope of Moses that all of God's people would be prophets was fulfilled that day. I wasn't there when 70 elders were gathered at the tent and neither was Eldad or Medad. I wasn't there when 10 disciples were gathered in the upper room and neither was Thomas. Yet God generously decided to include those who had been excluded. If there's a welcome for Eldad, if there's an invitation for me, Dad, if there's a reception for Thomas, then there's a place for folks just like me and just like you. For you see, in the year 33, remember that number? The Spirit raised Jesus up from the dead. In the year 33, Jesus breathed his Holy Spirit on the disciples in the upper room. In the year 33, the Spirit came down from heaven with tongues of fire and a mighty rushing wind. In the year 33, the Spirit established a club, not limited to 487 members, but one whose numbers are worldwide. Not exclusive by any means, but inclusive of all kinds. It's not limited to the rich, but to the poor, the blind and the lame. It includes Greeks and Jews, slaves and free, barbarians and Scythians, gays and straights, communists and capitalists, men and women, cisgender and transgender, Republicans and Democrats. None of us, none of us were on the A-list of invitees but were found along the highways and byways, and yet here we are. I happen to know someone who can get you in the door. We have been gathered and gifted. Now it's time for us to go. And let God's people say, Amen.
And I would say it's time for God's people to stand and sing. What do you think? <laughs> this right here in remembrance of me. You know, the older I get, the more I realize that memories I have are, are more and more special because they actually define who I am. They affect me, they nurture me, and some of them are good, most of them are, I'm blessed to say, but some of them are sad. But even those continue to enrich me in, in a way that I find as a real blessing. And you know, it's good to remember in the Old Testament, we read when the Israelites were being led to the Promised Land, several times, God, as they left a place, God would say to them, build an altar, usually out of stone, and remember what I have done for you. That was important to God. And, of course, one of my favorite ones is, is in the New Testament when G at the birth story of Jesus, when the shepherds came and told Mary and Joseph what the angels had told them about this baby. The Bible says that Mary pondered these things and kept them in her heart. I, I love that. And those of you who have loved ones, maybe some who are no longer here in this life, but they continue to enrich you. So let us remember as we partake of the communion what the cup and what the bread represent and all are invited. This is, this is not a selective club. This is, well, I guess it is kind of selective, even though all are welcome because of who invites us there. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the invitation to partake of this cup and this loaf, which serve to remind us we weren't there at the Last Supper. But we remember because of what scripture tells us, and we know that Jesus gave very precise instructions to his disciples to take and to eat and to remember me when you do. Thank you, Lord, for the invitation. Thank you for the cup and the bread, and thank you for this time right here together. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.
because Christ welcomed all without exclusion to his table, we extend his invitation to you today. On the night when Jesus was gathered with his friends, he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread together. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave God thanks and praise. And he gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again in glory. Drink the cup together. Because we have received these gifts of Christ made present for us through the power and action of the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying in one voice, our Father. As we continue around this table every Sunday, it's time to talk about stewardship and our offering. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Last Sunday, we celebrated Pentecost. Half of the, the finances that came in last Sunday and the ones that come in today stay here at Murray Hills. The other half goes to new churches such as Rio de Dios, Dios <laughs> that we celebrated here with us last Sunday. It also gives us a time to give back, no matter what little piece that's given to us, but we need to share it back with the church because in doing so, it not only gives us that feeling that we are a part of Murray Hills and the greater church, but it also, to me, gives me that strength to know that the church is there for me. Murray Hills is there. So we give back to our congregation. Will they please bring the morning offering?
Will you pray with me? Oh God, we are blessed and thankful that we are able to be here this morning to hear the inspiring words, the words of wisdom, the words of comfort, and the words of strength. Bless the givings that each one gave today to the ongoing work of your ministry here at Murray Hills. We ask these things in your name, oh God. Amen. Seated for just a few announcements. One is that summer is just around the corner, and VBS leaders are looking for folks. Uh, we're looking actually for you to help get the word out about kids because we have uh, lots of opportunities for young people in uh, our community, whether they're yours, whether you know somebody, a neighbor who has some kids or grandkids that could be a part of it. We're going to be doing Knights of the North Castle. So we're going to decorate this entire space to look like a uh, set from some kind of uh, <laughs> medieval times. So please, if you know of someone, uh, s recommend them to connect with us. There's an online easy registration, easy way of connecting. Uh, if you have other questions, you can see Katie or Lori or myself um, as well. I want to give thanks to our handbells, our alt alto sax, cowbell, and choir today for some amazing music. Let's show our appreciation. And I want to thank everyone for their gifts to the Pentecost offering. Just a simple clarification. Half of, that, uh, half of those funds stay in our region, uh, which helps new church ministries like you saw with our folks here with Rio de Dios last week. The other half goes to the U.S. and Canada manifestation of our church, uh, which is headquartered out of Indianapolis. It does amazing work, and uh, we, as they say, everybody was once a new church once upon a time. So um, thank you for your generosity to that ministry. Uh, and a quick survey, who in here likes coffee or hot tea? Or maybe not even room temperature tea. I'll take room temperature <laughs> tea. If you, But um, it, who likes cookies? I might get a universal chocolate um, cookies. If you would like uh, to extend that ministry of hospitality, there are opportunities. So you can see Audrey for ways that you can help serve and extend a welcome uh, to folks. There are places uh, for you to contribute uh, in great ways, great and small to that. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? No, I don't think there is. So should we sing? Sounds excellent. All right, stand as you're willing and able, and shall we sing, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. Our blessing. The Holy Spirit has gathered and gifted us. Now it's time to go. In Jesus' name, amen.